Hi, you're listening to the Stefan Levera podcast, a show about Bitcoin and Austrian economics. Today, for episode 201, we're talking about Bitcoin local trader coming to Blue Wallet with Nuno and Igor. So if you're interested in getting your friends or doing it for yourself to buy Bitcoin without KYC and non-custodial all in the one app, connected with HODL HODL. Well, we're going to talk about that in this episode. We're going to talk about also the user experience, Lightning, Custodial, watch-only wallets, and hardware wallet support. This show brought to you by Swan Bitcoin. You already know Swan is the best place to auto-stack Bitcoin in the US with low fees and easy setup. Connect your account, set the amount and frequency of your buys, and rest easy as Swan automatically buys your Bitcoin. Get started using my link, swanbitcoin.com slash Levera. Swan is also making a splash on the Bitcoin content scene with Swan Signal, pairing up great Bitcoiners for unique and compelling discussions live every Wednesday on Twitter and YouTube, also available as an audio podcast. They've got a bunch of great shows in the archive, so go and check that out. That's available at youtube.com slash swansignal or the podcast at swansignalpodcast.com. Next is the Cypher Wheel by Cypher Safe. Are you backing up your Bitcoin seed? If you've written down the 12 or 24 words, are you keeping that on the piece of paper that came with your hardware wallet? Or are you going to look at keeping that in a way that's more fireproof, waterproof, rustproof, petproof, and tamper evident. The cipher wheel comes in a wheel shape and it masks the words of your seed. You slide in the tiles for each of the letters and in this way you can make sure that you or your loved ones have access to your bitcoins if an accident occurs. They've also got the casino dice padlock sized uh, for the cipher wheel as available on the website. You go to cyphersafe.io and use the code LAVERA to get 10% off. Next is Unchained Capital, Bitcoin native financial services, built using the foundation of multi-signature. So if you need a way to easily set this up and you're not sure how to do it, well, Unchained Capital can guide you through the process. So you can go on the website, there's a Vault Concierge onboarding package, and you can select the package, which includes whether you want to have hardware wallet devices mailed out to you. Uh, The concierge team will walk you through and set up and provide guidance, and you can build that vault together. If you need US dollars and you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, well, this is where Unchained Loans can help you out. You can put up some Bitcoin and get US dollars. Remember, all Bitcoin is stored on-chain. It's in dedicated multi-sig addresses. You still hold one of three keys in that scenario and you know it's never being rehypothecated. So go and look into Unchained Capital. They've got a lot of awesome content on their blog, such as Parker Lewis's Gradually Then Suddenly series, which is great for sending to your new coiner friends. And they've got a range of other open source contributions in the space, such as Caravan, Multi-Signature, and Hermit, which is a Slip39 Shamir's secret sharing scheme. Scheme. So go and find out more at unchained-capital.com. Now on to the interview. Nuno and Igor, welcome to the show. Hey guys. Hi there. Hey guys. So uh, thanks for joining me today on the show. I've been uh, watching the progress with Blue Wallet and I thought it would be great to get you guys on to chat a little bit. Uh, do you want to just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Blue Wallet? So uh, Nuno, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, I can start. So basically, it started in the in the last bull run for at least from my side. Uh, so I remember like I was in the in my corporate uh, job and the office, and like everyone was just buying shit coins, uh, using Coinbase <laughs> and so on. Yeah, like I think this happened to too many people. Like, and I, I and I just thought like, okay, there's uh, if this is the best that we have at the moment, there's a lot more to be built. So yeah, I just decided to start uh, because I'm a designer, right? And uh, like engineer is not my my strength. So I decided, okay, let me start to learn more about why why Bitcoin works this way. What are the tricky parts? What we need to learn to design something? Uh, yeah, then I decided to okay, let me let me try to find an open source project that I can contribute to. Yeah, and the story there is funny because like I just went to to Reddit. Uh, to our Bitcoin, and I just posted, "Hey guys, I'm a designer. Uh, many years of experience. Does anyone needs uh, needs help?" Uh, and that's where uh, that's where I found uh, Igor, or Igor found me actually. So that's <laughs> that's like uh, that's like the short story. Awesome, Igor. Let's hear from you. Yeah, I just uh, I was browsing Reddit and found Nuno, who was looking to design something to contribute to the space. Uh, so I started uh, Blue Wallet. I think the the very early beta was out in early 2018. Uh, so the reason I built it uh, was uh, because 
in the 2017 bull market, uh, there were lots of companies, lots of wallets who failed to implement SegWit, implement batching, transaction replacement, fee bumps. Uh, and I was super unhappy with that. I was unhappy with Bread Wallet, which was my, my main wallet at, at, at the time. Uh, and I was in touch with Viktor Rachenka, who, who is the creator of uh, Trust Wallet for Ethereum. Uh, back in the day, it was still pretty much a known wallet. So he said, like, Igor, you know your stuff. Why don't you build your own wallet? And I said, hmm, indeed, why not? So I started building it. And I released a very bad-looking uh, beta version. It was completely bluish because I stole some free designs from the web. It was a uh, blue background with white text. Uh, so I had to come up with a name, and the obvious name was Blue Wallet because everything was blue. Uh, yeah, so I released the beta version early 2018, and I found Nuno. And I said, Nuno, we, we have uh, an opportunity to create a cool uh, Bitcoin wallet, uh, but the only thing we cannot change is the name. Because once you the name, it's, it sucks because you have to register a legal entity to publish your app. You have to name it uh, after your app. So Apple, for example, has a policy. Uh, if you're in fintech, uh, your company name must resemble the, your main product name. So you can be blah, blah, blah and have a blue wallet as your main product if you're in fintech. So that's the Apple's regulation. So we had to register a, co a company named Blue Wallet Technologies. Uh, and uh, name everything blue something. That's why we have to stick with blue blue wallet name. Uh, yeah, and since then uh, things started getting better and better. We got more users, more features. But the very first feature I aimed to deliver was specifically SegWit and uh, replaced by fee, which is a tool to uh, bump your transaction fees. So if you're unhappy with your transact with the fees of the transaction you send. Uh, you increase fees gradually till your transaction gets confirmed. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about the way you set up the wallet and you get it. So obviously, for listeners, this is available on Android or iPhone. And I think one thing Blue Wallet is known for is just being really simple and easy to set up. So talk, can you just talk us through what's the process there uh, in terms of setup? You mean uh, you mean just to start using it? Yes. No, yeah, like I think uh, one of the main goals and uh, that's like uh, what we are trying to build, it's to build a wallet for uh, like for the beginner user, like someone that just started in Bitcoin, wants to get access to their own keys uh, and wants to have a little bit of security that they are like using an open source project uh, that is following Bitcoin and is uh, trying to get, uh, trying to have everything uh, up to date with the protocol and so on. So. That's kind of the main idea. So we try to make things like easier, simpler, uh, like appealing uh, and, and even fun. Like that's a, a little bit the concept. Uh, so basically you just start, uh, you just install a wallet from the App Store. You click, uh, like you just tap uh, add a wallet and you choose Bitcoin and uh, that's it. Like it's a little bit different from most wallets like Usually what you see in wallets is like uh, you have a start screen and they ask you, do you want to create a wallet or you want to import an existing one? Like the wallet is a bit different. Like it starts by showing you the interface right away. Uh, so you can learn it, you can feel secure about it. And, and then you can choose to create the wallet once you see how the interface works. So yeah, I think there's a little bit of uh, effort and thought behind uh, what you, what we do to try to make it simpler uh, for the uh, for the new users. That's the main the main goal of Blue Wallet at the moment. Like, uh, I think in the future there are many areas that we can try to go, like uh, security, privacy, uh, private key management, cold storage, uh, and all that sort of thing. But at the moment, is to have like a very simple wallet that, uh, as you learn, you're gonna discover a bit more powerful features, uh, like uh, fee control, like batching, like connecting to your own node. But the idea, the idea is that you start uh, very simple with all the powerful, with all the power on your hands. So I would just give you the key, and that's it. Write it on the piece of paper and learn what the hell this is. Great. And so when you start Blue Wallet, you've also got the option to create the different wallets. So you have a Bitcoin one, and then you've got a Lightning side, and then you can do, say, a watching only side, where if you want to have, say, your cold card or 
etc. Um, so I think that's an interesting way to structure it as well uh, to give the new Bitcoiner some conceptual separation of what's going on in those different uh, sub wallets, if you will. Um, so I'm interested to talk a little bit about your local trader feature because I, I uh, recently interviewed, uh, you, you might have heard the episode, I did, I did an episode with Max from Hoddle Hoddle and we spoke a little bit about the local trader feature. So I'd love to hear some of your perspective uh, on uh, that and how you integrated it into Blue Wallet. So maybe Igor, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you, you did this and how you integrated it? Yeah, sure. So uh, I met Max on Lightning Conference uh, and I've been following Hoddle Hoddle for a while. And I actually consider Hodl Hodl as an important infrastructure project for the whole Bitcoin ecosystem because Bitcoin is built to be resilient, uh, on uh, to be against uh, any kind of uh, regulations or blocking or whatever. So with Hodl Hodl, people can trade Bitcoin even if it's blocked in their country. So no one can uh, forbid people to pay each other money. So and this is how Hodl Hodl works. And it has a scroll multi-sig, so it's non-custodial. So people can trade Bitcoin even if everything is blocked in your country. Uh, so this is this is very, really important. So what what you gonna do if Coinbase is blocked in your country? What you gonna do if Bitcoin is uh, forbidden in your country? You can still trade it on Hodl Hodl. Uh, and the fact that it's non-custodial, it's 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 pretty good. Uh, so I said that we should probably integrate because we need to support projects like this. We need more to have more users uh, aware about this project and more users to use it to, to give liquidity to everyone who wants to sell who wants to buy and huddle huddle uh, and that's why we integrated yeah and we launched it uh, so you can now buy bitcoin non-custodial in a non-custodial way through blue through blue wallet we're planning to release support for selling th through blue wallet as well yeah this is how it is that's awesome. And so I actually, uh, I, I tested it out myself. I just wanted to uh, get a feel for how it works. And obviously, I recognize this is very early days. I found I was quite impressed in terms overall, I thought it was quite a simple flow. So essentially, at least my experience walking through it, you set up the Bitcoin wallet, then you go click buy on local trader, and then you log in with your HODL HODL username. So you have to have a HODL HODL username. And then you'll see the offers in your area. And then you can pick those um, and then there were a couple little catching points um, that I found. Uh, they weren't like too major. Obviously, I'm a more experienced Bitcoiner, um, but for somebody who maybe is a little bit newer, that might be a little bit confusing. But I, I think this is probably one of those things where it's just early, right? So for me, one thing I noticed was when you were doing the address, uh, it, it's the address, the receive address is the one listed on the HODL HODL profile page where I was I I got the impression that it will like pick an address out of your wallet does that it's make a, sense yes this actually uh, this is a planned feature so we hadn't uh, enough time to finish it the way uh, we envisioned gotcha. it so uh, the way we envisioned it and huddle huddle preparing back end to support this uh, so every time you do a trade the address is going to be provided from blue wallet so you can actually have for example, a watch-only wallet that's tracking your cold card, and it's watch-only. You cannot spend from 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 this watch-only on Blue Wallet. But every time you do a trade, you're buying Bitcoin. Uh, a new address is going to be generated for for your watch-only, uh, and your Bitcoins from escrow are going to be released to this address. So they all land on your cold card. This is a planned feature. It's not yet live. Uh, we are waiting for some changes from uh, Hodl Hodl API, uh, but it's going to be delivered delivered eventually. Uh, yeah, and if you're talking about usability and user experience, there's only another way to trade Bitcoin in non-custodial way, which is BISC, and it's way more uh, movements to to get your BISC node working. So, at the moment, Hodl Hodl is a bit easier than BISC, but we're trying, we're 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 doing our best to to make it easier and easier and easier. Yeah, and I can talk a bit about the multi-wallet scheme we have in Blue Wallet. Uh, yes, obviously, you can have on-chain wallets, you can have watch-only wallets, you can have Lightning wallets on Blue Wallet. Uh, I usually say that this is both a blessing and a curse for a wallet. Uh, well, first, Blue Wallet started as a tool for ourselves uh, to manage our own zoo of different keys and different schemes. And uh, we started supporting more and more schemes like BIP84, BIP44, BIP49, uh, legacy keys, like single addresses. 
uh, single addresses, wrapped SIGWIDs, single addresses, native SIGWIDs, uh, Electrum, uh, uh, hierarch uh, Electrum HD schemes, uh, and Lightning. Uh, so you can have all of that in Blue Wallet, uh, and it's a pain in the ass to support all of this. Uh, but I think it brings value because different people migrate from different wallets uh, and they want to bring their own keys and they will mostly work in Blue Wallet. So even if it's a pain in the ass to support all of this, I think it brings a lot. Yeah, I can imagine that would be quite a bit of work to maintain across all the different standards. Whereas uh, if you just kind of have one thing that you do, but obviously there's, there is that uh, compatibility aspect there. Um, so uh, just on the local trader as well. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the sell flow might look like? So let's say somebody is uh, wanting to sell from Blue Wallet. Would it basically be similar to the buy flow or what, what are some differences there? It would be pretty similar. Yeah. So you would, you would have to, if you're selling, you would have to create an offer. Uh, and once your offer is created, it's just sitting there waiting for someone to accept your offer. Uh, and once the offer is accepted, uh, you would have to send coins from Blue Wallet to an escrow address. Yeah, an escrow address on Huddle Huddle, it's uh, two out of three multi-six. So one key uh, belongs to Blue Wallet, one key belongs to Huddle Huddle, and one key belongs to Buyer. Uh, so, and those three keys, they make uh, an escrow address. So you deposit coins to an escrow address, and then you provide payment details to, uh, to the buyer like your bank details, and you await for the buyer to send uh, payment with Fiat. Uh, once you get the payment, you press the button to release it from escrow. It's a bit more steps from uh, compared to buying Bitcoins, but I think it's kind of similar. Yeah, and look, I, I think it's a great feature overall, and I'd definitely love to see more development in this direction because it makes it easier for someone to just let's say, okay, so the listeners of my show, they're typically not the straight beginner Bitcoiner, but they're typically someone who's, you know, teaching their, you know, their own friends. And so this might be a good feature for you if you want to have your friend learn how to buy Bitcoin without KYC to start with. Um, whereas historically that has been kind of, that's been a little bit more difficult, whereas this is kind of all in that app, if you will. Um, so I, I like that uh, aspect of it. I think it's, it's it should be an option that's out there, right? Because you've got KYC services and then with Hoddle Hoddle, you've got non-KYC. So that's a really cool feature. Um, and yeah, just excited to see ways that make that easier and all part of the, the that flow. And so if we could talk a little bit about some of the different wallets. So uh, the example you were touching on earlier around the, the watching only wallet for cold card. So can you tell us a little bit about yeah, the process sorry, can around I, can doing Can I add that? something to, to local trading before I move on? Because like, I think, as you said, it's like, uh, it's like early days, right? And, and I think it's still very underrated, but it's a super powerful feature that uh, more people should be looking into because let me just explain the concept better so imagine that we have service like the other like bisc and so on that are that are essentially like liquidity pools uh, and imagine this service they start to provide open apis for uh, for uh, projects like blue wallet to to use so eventually uh, you're going to have uh, enough liquidity for people to start to build, uh, to bring li liquidity for their own service, for instance, to bring liquidity for coin joints, to bring liquidity for pay joints, to bring liquidity for coin swaps, uh, to, 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 buy, to buy and sell freedom, freedomly without, uh, without KYC. Like, I think this, uh, this service like uh, Odal, Odal and BISC are extremely important. People should support them more. Uh, and eventually, I think this is the way that we can uh, not kill, but uh, but uh, fight against the big companies, the the, the coin bases of the, of Bitcoin and so on, uh, because this is where we, uh, as decentralized service, we have like a, a strength there, uh, and we have a point to to actually make something useful with tons of liquidity for users. Uh, yeah, and I think this is like uh, it's the, one of the things that I'm more excited in the future to see this service grow and being used by independent projects to just uh, bring their liquidity in and start to build stuff without the need of KYC and big companies to provide liquidity. 
So that's something super excited to look uh, to look forward to. For sure, for sure. And uh, actually, just uh, while we're on that topic of local trader and integrating. In terms of things like dispute flow, I suppose uh, the way that's handled in the app is Blue Wallet sort of opens up the browser to HODL HODL. And while you've got that, uh, I guess this is all happening through the API, but basically there's like the there's like the chat there that let's say you're buying, you can chat with that other, with the counterparty. And uh, I suppose also like the dispute flows and all of that will be built in inside the app, right? Uh, well, dispute flow is handled inside Hodl Hodl website, so you can either open chat inside Blue Wallet, which is basically a web view that's open in Hodl Hodl website, or just open desktop computer, launch your browser, and go to Hodl Hodl. Yeah, so dis- disputes are quite rare, and we didn't build anything specifically for disputes. So you have, if you have dispute, you have to go to Hodl Hodl website. Also, I think the feature that uh, Max mentioned in. That in my recent episode with him, uh, which I'd also love to discuss with you guys, is this idea of being able to buy directly into, let's say, a cold card. So uh, did you want to just touch on, firstly, how you would firstly import the cold card uh, master public key into Blue Wallet? Well, yeah, actually, watch-only wallets are my favorite feature in Blue Wallet. So uh, if you're not trusting your keys uh, to a software that's running on your phone, uh, you can import your wallet as a watch only. Uh, we support different schemes. So we support uh, BIP84, BIP44, BIP49, and uh, several election formats, which are not uh, BIP compliant, BIP39 compliant, as far as I remember. Uh, and you can just grab XPUB from them and import it in Blue Wallet. And it will import everything with your balance, with your transactions. Uh, and it's a watch only, you cannot spend from it. So what you can do, you can just create new addresses from this hierarchy and give addresses to whoever wants to pay you. You can give this address to HODL HODL and HODL HODL will, uh, will be releasing Bitcoins to, the, to those addresses. Uh, yeah, with call card, there are several ways to import your call card. You can use SD card. So uh, you write your... Uh, Skeleton, I think it's called skeleton wallet format if you go to, to the cold card device. Uh, but you can just copy paste zip up and import zip up in the import screen of Blue Wallet and it will work. So either way it will work, either through SD card with a don't go for iPhone, for example, or just copy paste and zip up. It will work. Uh, also, is there a possibility to do QR code scan there as well? Well, cold cards do not support uh, QR codes, right? Because the display is super small. So that's why you have to either mess with files, either copy, paste, zip up, or just move skeleton file to the SD card. Uh, but there are projects, I think the foundation device, uh, the new hardware wallet, which is based on cold card firmware, I think it's they're created specifically to be cold card compatible uh, in terms of firmware and to provide QR code flow. So it can be completely air gapped. Yeah, and at the moment we support QR codes with with Cobo Vault, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, another another kid in town, which is Cobo Vault uh, devices. They specifically designed their device to be uh, air gapped and with QR code flow, which makes a lot of sense to me because once I have my call a hardware wallet with bitcoins, I really don't want to plug it to anything. I don't even want to insert my SD card in this. Like it's it feels like a risk to me. So making the flow completely air gap makes a lot of sense to me. Excellent. And so just with that uh, connector, so I've seen, I think there's a demonstration video uh, that you have in terms of doing it with iPhone. I presume you can do similar with Android as well, that you just need a basically a connector that can take a micro SD. And then that's how you basically shuttle the, the skeleton file over, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Or uh, you can use Dropbox or whatever cloud. I see. Um, And so that's also another interesting idea as well. So we are potentially moving into a world where there will be some users who don't actually have a PC of their own. They might have a work laptop or a work PC, but maybe not. Um, Maybe their main phone or their main device is their phone So or, or a tablet, let's say. So that's potentially another option where a person can have a hardware wallet without necessarily using a desktop or a laptop PC with it if they do the whole you know, import watching only style. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, 
that user who wants to now advance up the pathway and they want to now start doing things with their own Bitcoin node. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that process would look like? I suppose we've got um, Electrum servers and then we've also got LND hub and so on. So can you tell us a little bit about how to advance up that curve? Because I guess just naively, if the user just is totally new and they're just doing this, well, there is some level of, well, there's at least a, there's a privacy concern there because they're not using their own server, they're not using their own node, or those uh, elements. So could you just comment on that as well? No, no. No, yeah, I can I can comment. You can you can give a more a more technical uh, <laughs> feedback, but like, yeah, like I think we did very early the back and uh, like the open sourcing our back in and allowing an integration with uh, with uh, with users own Electrum servers. Like we uh, we did it last year, so we had uh, less than one year as a as a wallet. So we did that pretty early. And I think it was a very good decision, like to right away allow people to just connect their own nodes because like uh, most of the Bitcoiners that care, they use their own nodes uh, and they know what they are doing, right? So that that was one of the concerns that we had last year. So we did spend a lot of time trying to make that right. Uh, and it was like, uh, yeah, it was a struggle. But like at the moment, I think it's pretty okay. Like it's not the best that it can be. Like you still need... Uh, to define uh, to define IPs, to get an URL, to get uh, certificates, and so on. But uh, like it could be better just with the QR code and so on. But we are not there. Uh, but it's pretty simple if you know what you are doing. You just need your uh, your Electrum IP, uh, and you can connect it. Like if you want to assess it outside of your local network, you need a VPN, for instance. But like so far, we are happy. It will for sure uh, improve in the future. Uh, yeah, there's a cool thing that there are providers that sell uh, nodes that sell hardware uh, with pre-installed Bitcoin and Lightning node. Uh, specifically, my node BTC, which is I like a, a lot. Uh, they uh, they provide Raspberry Pi with the case, with the casing, with the storage, with pre-installed Bitcoin, with the pre-installed LND, and with pre-installed LND Hub. So basically, you can buy this device, with, which is pretty cheap because it's based on Raspberry Pi. Uh, and it already has everything you need to be uh, to be to have self custody, and you just connect your blue wallet to it, and everything works, and you're in control all 100% of the time. Gotcha. And so, in terms of the, I guess the backups situation as well, right? So, I presume then for the Bitcoin side, it's the typical write down 24 words, and then on the Lightning side. Uh, what's the backup situation like there? Is it uh, as I when I was um, messing around with it, it basically had an LND hub URL, and I presume that's just for if you're using you know Blue Wallet's um, LND hub, right? Yeah, yeah. So LND hub is a wrapper around LND. Uh, so it, basically, the default one is hosted by us. So the backup screen is basically username and password. Uh, once you install your own LND hub, uh, it's gonna be uh, username and password, which is connected to your own node. So yeah, this is this is how you roll if you're running uh, in custodial mode with Lightning. And so I think it might be also useful just for listeners who are not familiar with what LND Hub enables. It allows a kind of uh, account based system. So uh, as an example, you might want to run the infrastructure the, you want to be the proverbial uncle jim for your family and friends you might be able to you might run one lightning node with lnd hub and then they, they can be users on your node so could you just outline a little bit about how lnd hub works to do that yeah basically lnd hub is a thin wrapper around lnd which tracks users balances and do and does stuff on their behalf like sending payments and creating invoices yeah and this is you described it pretty accurately so uh, we were noticing this is how people use it they install it and they allow all their friends and family uh, uh, use it so this means uh, one person uh, holds uh, hosts one lnz node for everyone for all his inner circle and so then it basically means that the you know the guy who can run lnd hub for his family and friends he does all the channel management and just sets up the channels and all of that and then for his family and friends they just have a nice easy they just use it they just pay or receive and they don't really think too hard about it yeah absolutely so and th there is no channel management 
uh, displayed on the front end. So when you're using Blue Wallet, you're not seeing any anything about channels. So it's the guy who hosts Talent Hub has to uh, do all the hard work of managing liquidity. All right. Um, and in terms of more secure ways to connect back with your own node, I know there was, I think this was like one concern that was raised earlier, maybe it was earlier in the year around doing it in a more secure way. Did you want to just comment on that and uh, any advancements being made in that space? Uh, which one was that? Uh, I, I think, remember we had I the think, ticket. I think it was in relation to SSL, connecting using your um, SSL uh, yeah. to your own Electrum server. Yeah, yeah. So the, the the better version of our Electrum integration was uh, using plain text uh, port, uh, no SSL. Uh, we had a ticket to fix that, and uh, we eventually fixed that. So all connections through Electrum are through SSL for, I don't know, for quite a long time. Yeah. No, yeah, I think like uh, really, it's more related on, on how we work and how we build things. Like uh, we all the time, no matter what we do, we have people requesting for stuff, asking for things to be different. Uh, and this is just related to the way of, how we work, I think, because we work in a very iterative way with very small uh, chunks of changes being deployed like uh, every every two weeks almost. Uh, so of course we cannot build everything at the same time. But it's just a matter of time uh, till till we get there. And I think the, the the concerns about about the security and privacy were valid concerns, and we just take it as feedback, like something to improve. Uh, and in this case, was the TLS uh, integration with with Electrum that was not there. Uh, so eventually, we just got the time uh, got the time and 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 the people to do it because like. Uh, in the end of the day, we are not a big team, so we cannot do many things at the same time. Uh, and, and luckily, we have many people contributing, so that's a good thing. So more things are getting into production. Uh, but it's just a matter of time, like small iterations, like uh, every release, we put something out there. Uh, we get feedback and, and we improve. I think this is the, the best way to work, and it's the way we like to work as well. Excellent. And uh, I noticed on your website, now I'm not a Mac or iPad user myself, but I noticed you are working on a desktop app. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what you're thinking to build there? Yeah. Do you, do you want to, do you want to explain it? Like, I think the, I can just talk about what is the, the concept, right? So Blue Wallet is trying to be a, a wallet for, uh, for like the, as I said, the, the beginner, the, the newbies, uh, and and desktop is a big platform for that. Like, uh, I think mobile will be, as you said, like uh, big in some countries. Uh, some countries don't even have the habit of having a uh, a desktop. Um, but uh, desktop uh, can be very useful for for many people uh, as well. Like, and especially like we are seeing people with uh, accessibility needs asking for for stuff. Uh, and usually desktop works works better for these kind of things. Uh, I think it's also an experiment on our our tech stack uh, because we are using React Native, which gives us a, a lot of power on mobile. So we can, uh, I know, I'm not sure if you noticed, but we have a very, very fast canvas of, of releasing for iOS and Android. And the reason for that is that we develop once uh, and it works for both platforms. Uh, and what we are seeing now is React Native starting to go to go to the desktop, starting to go to the web, uh, and it's still very experimental uh, experimental frameworks and libraries. But we managed to compile a first version to to Mac, to to macOS Catalina, which which is great because the the Bitcoin code itself, like the way you create transactions, the way you sign transactions, the way you broadcast transactions, it's uh, it's like it's battle tested in, a, in in production, but uh, the way to compile the app to desktop is not yet. So that's what we are trying to see now with the alpha release. Like, is there any problems? Are there any bugs? Are different versions of software seeing different problems? And from there, as support increases uh, for Windows and Linux and so on, we're gonna keep adding more more platforms. But it's a super nice experiment, and uh, I'm super happy that we are working with React Native because it gives us a lot of power and flexibility to put code and put code fast out there. 
I'm curious as well uh, what your thoughts are around trying to synchronize across the mobile and the desktop because obviously if it's connecting to you know the Electrum server or whatever it will have the transaction you know the amounts uh, but it might it might not necessarily synchronize the descriptions is that something you would look at doing as well at having a way for your mobile to sync with your desktop app yeah. or what are you thinking there Yes we had requests from users like some people have spend a lot of efforts to document every transaction they make. Uh, so the, uh, their transactions all have meaningful description, text descriptions, text memos, so people can remember what was this about, this transaction. Uh, and we had requests to export just, for example, just text descriptions for their transactions so they won't lose them. Uh, so eventually we'll make some kind of synchronization system, maybe through your iCloud or through Dropbox or through something. We don't know yet, but this will definitely be done eventually. Yeah, I think that like the the first feedback we got when we released this uh, this alpha version was, uh, hey guys, I I have uh, I have uh, like uh, a lot of wallets in my mobile and I just want to export everything to desktop. Please make it easier. Um, so that's like the first improvement we're gonna do. Yeah, so I, I just looking through the application as well. There were some interesting things I saw. So I think this is a new one. It's called, I think you guys call this ground control. And so basically you get a notification when you've got an incoming transaction. So that's a pretty cool little feature. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so ground control is a push notification server. It's open sourced because everything we do is open source. So yeah, this, this it's exactly serves the purpose to subscribe to uh, changes to your addresses uh, and to receive push notifications to your device. Yeah, and it was uh, named after uh, David Bowie's Space Oddity song. So it's a tribute to David Bowie, uh, to his memory. I also noticed uh, you are looking at LN URL, which is uh, one of those easy ways to scan uh, and uh, get an invoice or receive. So I think in this case, you're looking at LN URL pay, correct? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's delivered. I think we released it a couple of weeks ago. No, yeah, regarding push notifications and LN... LN... Alien, where I'll pay. This is this was the the one of the last releases. Like push notifications are just a super cool feature to have on a mobile app. It just increases the experience the experience by by a lot. So you don't need to open the app all the time to see if you got a transaction or not. You don't need to open the app to see if you already got a, a confirmation. Like so, it's a super cool feature. I'm uh, super happy with it. And regarding uh, Alien uh, URL, like it has a it's oof, a pull request that has been there for at least eight months, like a contribution from uh, from uh, Fiat Jeff uh, from Tiago that we're trying to get in get get uh, getting the feature instead of Blue Wallet. Like in in the end of the day, like Alien URL is a little small protocol that can improve the experience on on Lightning. Uh, so we are super open of exper experimenting with Lightning. Like I think Lightning is still a very, uh, a very big experiment, uh, and uh, like anything we try to do to learn more, it's knowledge for everyone. Uh, yeah. So we have uh, we have both LN, I, LN URL pay and uh, I draw. Right. Uh, and uh, also. Uh... Before we went online, you mentioned a little bit around multi-signature. So can you tell us uh, your thinking around that? And is that something you are trying to implement as well? Yes, actually, we're planning to work on multi-signature probably in several weeks. Uh, at the moment, we do not support multi-sig. Uh, yeah, we did some customer review, customer gathering customers' feedback, users' feedback. And mostly people use multi-sig for self-custody. So... Some, yeah, multi-seek is supposed to be uh, joint custody with someone else, with some other parties, but usually people use it for self-custody to, to increase security. And this is the way we're going to approach it. So we're, we're going to keep in mind that the multi-seek we're building is for uh, increasing the security of your funds. So it should be uh, as easy as possible to work with if you have several hardware wallets from different brands. So we're going to focus most on compatibility, Thanks. We have thanks. Thank you. We have PSBT. Uh, that helps a lot. Yeah, like super excited about multi sig. Like I think uh, multi sig is at the moment like the the holy grail of, of Bitcoin, right? So nowadays you we see people like uh, buying hardware wallets and hardware wallets became like a, a huge market. But uh, in the future we need to think about ways that. Uh, 
uh, your mobile phone needs to be enough somehow to to secure uh, to secure your coins, uh, and probably multi sig will be the right way to do that. Like there are teams experimenting with uh, uh, with exotic uh, things that are not uh, documented on BIPs, like uh, like seedless approach to with uh, with Shamir secret sharing and so on. But uh, I think multi sig is the right way to do it. And we're going to invest like the the rest of the year on it, and probably, I uh, probably it's going to be very cool. Like uh, we are talking about uh, a mobile solution that will focus on simplicity, and we're going to focus on making it uh, easier and probably free. Uh, so we have we have I have big ambitions with this feature. Like the idea is to commoditize uh, multi sig for the users. Uh, so that's how. How hard or how how much we gonna we gonna try to make it uh, like awesome basically that that's that's the idea to bring Motisig again to mobile like there was Copay at the time and people were using Copay on mobile uh, but it's not it's not the case anymore like I think Casa it's probably Casa Caravan and so on are the solutions and Electrum of course most used nowadays. But we want to bring uh, open source multi sig to mobile uh, the best way we we can. That's that's the idea behind multi sigs. Uh, so I guess my follow up question on that would just be: What are the main ways you're looking at implementing? Is that going to be using something like the the cold card SD card, or is it going to be trying to do the QR code approach with, say, the Kobo, or potentially with a passport? Uh, what are some of the ways that you're thinking about actually achieving that with a mobile? Well, we, we don't know yet. We are we are in research phase. Uh, it's the kind of thing that people that people we need to wait, but like uh, we are open to feedback at the moment. So we are checking all the solutions. We are trying to identify errors on the current solutions, and we are trying to identify ways to improve the current solutions. Uh, so we don't have an answer yet, but uh, but it will be more clear in the in the in the next weeks for us. So at the moment we are in research phase. And obviously, I've got to hit the privacy topic as well. I think uh, some listeners will definitely want to hear the answers around that. So are there any things that you're looking at in terms of things like pay joins or coin joins? Yes, actually, uh, at the moment, I'm working on pay joins. So we had uh, we have pull requests uh, from Luke about pay joins. So it's basically implemented. I just need to brush it up and we're aiming to release it with the next release, I guess. Uh, so page join is going to be there, but privacy is a very complex topic, uh, and I don't want to. Uh, I'm not even trying to look like I'm an expert on this topic, so I don't want to give people false hope that the wallet is going to be a privacy solution soon. Uh, so because privacy is hard to gain and, and it's easy to lose, uh, so we don't want to give the users false sense of security. So Blue World is not a privacy solution at the moment. If you're looking for privacy, look elsewhere. Yeah, like uh, I think the only thing I can I can add to that is that we are definitely more focused on security now and to make, uh, for instance, private key management easier and things like that. Then we are looking into privacy. Like, uh, and I, I look a little bit into privacy, and it's complex. Like, there's a lot of critics uh, on the current proposed BIPs. Most of the beep, the beeps were uh, were rejected to to be implemented on Bitcoin Core at least, and there were teams doing their own versions, and there is no consensus surrounding the current implementations. And of course, there is a huge fight uh, on the coin join uh, world that is just <laughs> f- that is just fun to see. But uh, but I think I think we need to see more uh, the centralized uh, solutions on coin join. Nowadays, we are relying on centralized service. I think BIP 47 is very interesting, but it's not its not clear why there aren't more wallets uh, uh, getting, uh, in, uh, how do you say it, introducing that. So we haven't looked into that, but uh, when we'll have the time and, uh, and the bandwidth to do so, uh, we will. But we are looking at least at what other people are doing. Uh, closely. I guess the other question that a user might have is just around the sustainability of the project. Um, that they, they might want to know, okay, 
this is an open source project. What's the way that uh, the project will sustain itself into the future? Is there like a revenue model? Is it venture funded? Can you can you discuss a little bit on that? Yeah, I think that's interesting. Like one of, one of the one of the first things that I that I realized when we decided to be the wallet was that there was a lot of uh, not a lot, but some material online telling okay, there's no business model for a Bitcoin wallet, especially. Uh, open source Bitcoin wallets. That is exactly what uh, what we are trying to do. Like, uh, but uh, I think it's a, a learning uh, matter. Like in the end of the day, we are dealing with a platform that the only thing it does is uh, handling transactions and handling value. Thinking that there is not a business model here, I think it's insane. Uh, but but it is concerning what we see on the industry nowadays. So basically, we see. Bitcoin wallets starting and eventually they go on the altcoin uh, road path uh, because they need to make money, right? So, and that's far from idea. Like the last thing we want to do or we we won't do it. I probably will kill the project and add any altcoin to it. Uh, but it's to find, we need to find a revenue model uh, that is independent, that is self-sovereign, that is decentralized. Uh, uh, to the wallet, and we have uh, we have ideas on how to do that. This is probably something we're going to work next year, uh, and this will pass in the way in in different ways. Like it will be about user experience. Like I think people will pay uh, for the best user experience on mobile. I think people will pay for the best self sovereign solutions that they can control without being dependent on any software provider. So we'll be working on that as well. Uh, in the end of the day, we can also like have uh, revenue models surrounding uh, fees, routing, like third parties. We already have some, like we have uh, revenue from uh, uh, from third parties on the service we have on the marketplace and on buying and selling Bitcoin with uh, the hodl, that kind of thing. But we need a stronger uh, business model that is independent. I think that is very important uh, and something that we're probably going to focus our time next year. Regarding founding and in the sustainability sustainability of the project, uh, oof, like um, many things to to say here. First is that Blue Wallet, uh, Blue Wallet is founded by by a group uh, of uh, Bitcoin OGs, investors that, uh, that uh, reach out and want to, to help us. Uh, so the short story is we bootstrapped the project for like one year and a half. And since uh, since March this year or February, probably February, we started full time. Uh, and at the moment, it's just me and Igor. Uh, in the next month, more contributors will uh, will probably pass full time. Uh, and this is the way we we want to work. We gonna we want to add uh, provide the contributors, the people that just started uh, contributed without anyone asking anything, to become. Uh, and be, to to be paid for their work, uh, so we are looking on how to how can we how can we provide uh, for instance like can we provide people with just Bitcoin bounties for the features? Uh, can we provide people with just re, rewards based on time, like a normal payment? Should they just be employees? Can we, for instance, uh, give uh, the company equity to the the contributors? Like this is all all different things. Uh, that we are looking into because like there's not many examples on Bitcoin on how to do this. So we have are kind of trying to, to figure out, which is a good thing. Like uh, it, it's good to be one of the first of, on doing something. Um, more things regarding founding. I already told that we are we were founded by, by some investors, by some Bitcoiners. Uh, and the process to do that was... Uh, was interesting uh, to say the least from uh, first we first we got lucky i think like we because like our our solution went kind of viral so there were many people trying it use it so we were approached by many investors which uh, which facilitated everything uh, at the same time brought many uh, many i'm not going to tell scammers but uh, there were Many people with bad offers, uh, people trying to acquire the company, people uh, people uh, trying us to get 
to, to go big and fail fast, kind of Silicon Valley style. Uh, we refused them. We refused many offers from big companies that we didn't like. Uh, so it was a learning process because, like, uh, so imagine, like, what happened was that we we were building a wallet and learning, and we started to play with Lightning, and uh, and eventually we put Lightning out there, and uh, the next day the wallet was going viral worldwide with thousands of users. So it was kind of an overwhelming uh, experience. For instance, I had to I had to quit my job. And the amount of emails and contacts we were getting was just completely insane, right? So that was very good in a way because we had many people that really wanted to help us. And it was bad because it it brought all the bad things with it as well. Uh, so we spent like the entire last year learning on, okay, how can we incorporate a Bitcoin company? Where is the best place to to incorporate a Bitcoin company? Where, how can we get a bank account for a Bitcoin company? For instance, uh, Igor, Igor got refused for uh, all banks in London uh, to, to get a bank account and be able to, to work, which is completely insane. That is uh, 2020 uh, and people are just being refused uh, having a bank account because they work on Bitcoin. But that was the reality and this happened in, uh, in February. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, myself, I had, I had to struggle a bit as well to figure it out. But like, uh, it was like a huge learning. Like, if people need help on how to set up a Bitcoin company, I can give some tips. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's that's the, the difficult part. I think in terms of investment, there's a lot of investment in the space, which is good, especially on the Lightning side. Many many companies want to support Lightning projects, uh, so that's a very good thing. But um, but at the same time, you also get a lot of investors that are crypto investors, that they don't understand what Bitcoin actually is. So most of the people that reach out, like I I always have to to answer the, the question, why, why are you guys just working with Bitcoin and not with Ethereum? Why do we, why you don't have tokens? <laughs> and, uh, and once that question came up, you already know that the conversation was not going anywhere, right? If I had to explain to an investor that we are working with sound money with uh, with probably the most scarce uh, thing ever invented, and this is a completely it's a breakthrough in technology. Maybe you are not the right person to work with us. Uh, so that was most of the conversations. Like uh, the reality, there is a lot of money, especially in crypto. In, in Bitcoin, is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so yeah, 2019 was a interesting year to say the least. Uh, it started from uh, Quitting my job to work on Blue Wallet full time uh, and to basically create a company and get investment without leaving my uh, without leaving my room, which was pretty cool in the end of the day. So, yeah, I'm I'm already speaking for a long time. Sorry. Yeah, about sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, thank you for that uh, explanation there around uh, you know the discussion of the business model for Blue Wallet. I think that's pretty much the main points that I wanted to touch on, unless there was anything else you wanted to close up with on uh, why people should consider using Blue Wallet. Igor, why should people use Blue Wallet? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I think the most important thing is like, like we are building the wallet for ourselves first. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's something always. that... It started as a tool for ourselves. It is a tool for ourselves. And sometimes we'll build stuff because we think it's freaking awesome, not because someone asked us to do this. Uh, and we're lucky that some people find that this is also a good, pretty cool and they use it. But the final goal is actually to be the good actor in the space and replace bad actors. And when I say bad actors, is I mean blockchain.com and Coinbase. If If we could replace them, that would be pretty good. Uh, yeah, like I just, I just want to say that, like, just try it out. Uh, give us feedback. Like, it's very important because m most of the time we are alone in our own, uh, in our own rooms, working by ourselves. Uh, so just reach out, uh, give feedback, like, and give a violent reaction if you want to trash something. Please do. That will be super useful as well. Uh, yeah. So feel free. Excellent. So where can listeners find you online? 
Uh, just find us on Twitter, like Blue Wallet is Blue Wallet.io. Uh, Twitter handle is Blue Wallet, Blue Wallet.io. Uh, I'm on Twitter as well as uh, NV Coelho. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's enough. Igor, you are over torment on Twitter. Yes, I am. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for inviting us. Thank you so much, Stefan. That was a pleasure. Now, as cold card came up in the episode, just a reminder for those of you who would like to get a cold card, it's my favorite Bitcoin hardware wallet, and you can get that from coinkite.com and use the code LAVERA for a discount on that also. Show notes are available on my website, stefanlavera.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the Citadels. 